A very good evening to ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Tagic Webinars. Our second in the series. And myself, Bharat, product manager at Tagic.com. Tagic Webinars is an initiative from Tagic.com to help techies grow professionally by learning from the industry experts every week. Today, we are here to learn about SEO on page best practices and checkups for developers. This, the presentation will continue for the next 45 minutes and we will address questions in the last 10 minutes. In case we could not answer all of them during the session, we will post them on tagic.com where Lalit will answer them personally. You can post questions during the chat in the chat available in the software during the session. Without taking much time of yours, I will introduce our guest speaker today. Mr. Lalit Kataria, who is the Assistant Vice President at AdLift.com. Lalit has 9 years of experience in technology, internet marketing and client services. He specializes in online marketing, campaign development and management, the website analysis. Lalit has hands-on experience in all aspects of organic search, social media optimization and thorough understanding of technical aspects like website management. So, uh, I welcome Lalit Kataria. So, yours Lalit. Thanks Bharat. Uh, good evening everyone. Uh, this is Lalit and uh, today I will be talking about uh, primarily SEO and uh, how web developers should uh, benefit from SEO and uh, the best practices uh, to keep in mind when a developer is coding. So uh, just to put everyone on the same platform and, and uh, to give you a brief uh, overview of what search engine optimization is all about, I'll be uh, quickly running through uh, SEO then we'll be talking about the best practices for developers, what all uh, things should be kept in mind when it comes to on-page uh, SEO and, and certain checkpoints uh, to do for developers uh, they should keep in mind while coding. So search engine optimization is primarily uh, manipulating or tweaking with the existing website content and uh, to make certain changes on, on an individual uh, page uh, to make uh, make it uh, search engine friendly and uh, to rank um, in search engine result pages. So uh, SEO is uh, very beneficial in generating leads because it, it it's it's entirely free of cost and and uh, it's kind of going fast. Uh, for example, every second uh, organization which is offline, it's it's they are they are uh, feeling the need to come online and making their presence feel in the uh, website domain so they are getting uh, their websites generated on a daily basis so there is a need uh, for the web developers to understand uh, SEO and how how uh, they can help their clients to rank better for uh, their theme based websites also uh, all, all your competitors are doing why not why not uh, you do it so uh, your competitors are uh, ranking good they have their websites they are all SEO friendly so it should be an ideal practice uh, to have an SEO friendly website uh, for your clients and SEO uh, comes at no additional cost because, because it's all natural it's not influenced uh, for example uh, Google AdWords the paid ads that you see when you search for something uh, on Google so this is this is uh, primarily uh, comes with no additional cost and the two important factors uh, uh, when we talk about search engine optimization are uh, on-page optimization and off-page optimization. On-page optimization is primarily uh, something which which has to do with uh, the tweaks or manipulation that you do on the website. That includes uh, various on-page factors like uh, inclusion of uh, keywords, the keywords that you are targeting uh, for an individual page, putting that in title tag. Uh, initially, or, or I would say every uh, single page on the website should have a unique title just to make uh, it, it, it uh, sound unique and then give it uh, its extra or its own weight uh, in the eyes of Google, uh, Google and all the other search engines. 
along with that uh, they should be uh, interlinking between all the web pages uh, within the website and age of the site is also uh, a parameter uh, that is there in Google algorithm that Google thinks while ranking any individual website and uh, along with that uh, use of targeted keywords in the content use of targeted uh, keywords in the URL just to make a uh, URL well structured and, and it sounds like more SEO friendly for example mywebsite.com uh, slash uh, education or, or something else no uh, usage of uh, question marks or any special characters appropriate use of uh, h1 s2 and all the HTML tags uh, all tags which will be uh, discussing later uh, in the uh, presentation second uh, most important uh, ranking factor uh, for SEO is uh, off page or link building for a client uh, website uh, building links from all the external uh, resources across the internet in uh, web directories or uh, getting fresh content written for the client and submitting into article directories and making uh, the anchor text uh, link or, or linking uh, to uh, the client's website and uh, linking uh, the client's website from uh, popular or trustworthy domains and uh, increasing the link popularity of, of uh, your client's domain. So uh, primarily uh, SEO is, is uh, ranking uh, on, on a list of keywords that, that you are uh, targeting for your individual website. And, and there are a lot of factors that, that should be kept in mind while a developer is coding an individual page. So we'll be uh, discussing about all these on-page uh, factors going forward. So uh, there, there are uh, a lot of factors uh, when, when it comes to coding an individual uh, URL for a website, for example, HTML tags, title tags, uh, making a targeted keyword bold or, or uh, putting all tag uh, to an image. So, so the most important uh, factor when it comes to SEO uh, while, while uh, coding an individual web page is title tag. So when a Google uh, crawler visits a web page, uh, the first thing that it sees uh, on that page is title. So it, it, it should be kept in mind that the title tag uh, is appropriately uh, uh, coded uh, between the head tag of, uh, of, of the URL. So uh, uh, the keyword uh, should be appropriately uh, uh, put in uh, to the H1 or, or the title tag. So the second most important uh, factor when it comes to uh, SEO is the uh, inclusion of H1 or the headline tag. So H1 uh, tag uh, primarily uh, speaks about uh, what what the content is all about on that page and 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 the use of targeted keywords. Apart from that, uh, when when we talk about the content uh, on on the on the page, so uh, just just to give extra influence to certain keywords on uh, on the page, we make them bold or we uh, we put them under strong uh, tag. All with that. Uh, there, there is an image tag for for some of the web browser that do not support images and and uh, and, and for uh, for very slow uh, speed uh, connections where, where images are not being loaded and and that uh, space for images left blank with a cross on it so uh, for that uh, we we have a image tag uh, which should be appropriately put in uh, the code and and we have a code as as we all can see that uh, image uh, src is equal to keyword uh, dot jpeg so uh, the idea over here is to give the image uh, a descriptive name. For example, if we have an image with with a uh, with a rack of textbooks, then we should uh, name it name it as textbooks.jpg. It should not be any any generic or or a numeric number uh, given to the uh, naming convention. For example, one two three four five eight dot jpg is not SEO friendly. So the idea over here is to give uh, as much uh, descriptive. Uh, uh, name to the uh, image or, or the alt keyword that is uh, allocated to that image. Apart from this, uh, uh, the keywords uh, should be appropriately hyperlinked uh, between the content and, and we should have a proper coding structure as, as we, all, we all can see in, in, in this uh, example uh, given uh, in front of hyperlink like href the uh, 
website name then slash mypage.html with the appropriate targeted keyword and and uh, keyword in the anchor text that we are linking to for the landing page apart from this uh, uh, we can also put a uh, no follow tag uh, in in the hyperlink when we talk about no follow tag uh, no follow tag is something which google uh, crawler uh, does not crawl uh, when i say does not crawl uh, if there is a hyperlink uh, going on to a different page google will not transfer the authority or or the uh, trust of uh, one page to the other page so we can we can uh, see the example uh, in the next slide uh, the all all the different type of title uh, h1 and different uh, tags that we talked about the first tag which is the most important tag uh, this is a screenshot about uh, for for one of the uh, very very uh, known textbook rental uh, websites in usa which is bookrental.com so this uh, screenshot talk, talks about this page uh, called textbook rentals and as we all can see uh, the title tag uh, is very important as it reads textbook rentals so uh, when google crawler uh, will come to this page it will know that okay this uh, particular url or particular page is talking about textbook rentals when it when it comes to the uh, url it, it reads bookrentor.com slash uh, textbook underscore rentals so in a way uh, while coding we are giving positive indication to google crawlers okay this is this is a relevant page in the title it has uh, textbook rentals in the uh, url structuring it has got uh, textbook rentals and and when it uh, crawls further uh, within the page it sees h1 tag which is also textbook rentals so we are giving all sorts of positive indication to google uh, to rank this page uh, higher up in the search engine uh, result pages for for a user who is searching for textbook rentals so i think this would be uh, the first or 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 the url that is shown on the first page of google so when we talk about hyperlink do follow uh, i have i have marked this uh, use textbooks uh, which is a do follow hyperlink and it it goes to a landing page which also says uh, bookrentor.com slash used underscore textbooks so this is this is an example for hyperlink uh, do follow so when you come uh, down below you can see an image alt tag which which says uh, which says uh, what uh, this book is all about uh, when you mouse over it it will it will uh, uh, say the name of the book uh, to which it is associated so ideally uh, the idea over here is uh, uh, to give correct uh, coding uh, indication or say correct indication to google crawlers when it comes to a web page so as a, as a web developer it should be a practice to incorporate correct tags or appropriate tags within head and within body and then to use them as per the uh, webmaster guidelines okay the next uh, uh, as we talked about our title tag which is which is the most important uh, important uh, tag uh, uh, out of all the html tags and we have a proper syntax that needs to be followed uh, for uh, for a google crawler to appropriately crawl it so uh, so there is a syntax uh, that that we all can see in this uh, title tag should always uh, appear between the head uh, uh, head tag and 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 there is there is a limitation of the number of characters that can be uh, used while while creating head tag so the limitation is uh, 70 characters so while we are formulating so as a web developers uh, we do not care much about okay what what's a title tag we just just put some random keywords and and at times we just put in the breadcrumb navigation into the uh, title tag so i think this is not the right approach so as a web developer the good practice would be to to just uh, review the uh, entire uh, web page it, it just i think takes 2 to 3 minutes to just go through the content and and to to just put in the most relevant uh, keywords that talk about that uh, individual url for example uh, we talked about textbook rentals so for that page the most appropriate keyword was textbook rentals so this is this is how it should be so it takes like a little time to put in the title but it is very beneficial when it comes to search engine optimization so when you make the website live so google will uh, know in the very first crawl okay this this is appropriate page for the target keyword and uh, that individual or uh, keyword which is assigned on on a specific url would 
start ranking or, or would start uh, showing ranks on sooner than than the URL which is which is not uh, SEO friendly. So uh, ideally, the uh, when you talk about title tag, so title tag uh, appears primarily at three different places. So uh, as we all know that when we open a website, for example, uh, techgeek.com, so at the top of the uh, browser you see uh, uh, certain characters or certain words. So that that that's primarily uh, the title of the page. For example, in this case, we we are talking about this website seomos.org, and and you can see that. The title is SEO hyphen search engine optimization uh, pipe separator read SEO MOZ rank better. So this is one place where uh, the title uh, is, is being shown. The second place is when when a user uh, searches for something. For example, a user is searching for search engine optimization on Google. So uh, this is this this shows up as a snippet. So there there will be ten different results on on the first page and. The title would be the one which is, is which is shown with a hyperlink, like SEO search engine optimization. with the pipe separator read SEO MOZ. The third uh, place where uh, the title uh, of any uh, individual URL is shown uh, is on the external website. For example, all these uh, social bookmarking websites that we have come across. For example, Big Delicious. So. When we submit uh, information about individual URL for a website, so they automatically pick up the title uh, of that page and show it uh, on their website. For example, uh, if someone bookmarked a <coughs> homepage of uh, SEMOS, so this is how the title looks like. So uh, another important factor uh, while while quoting uh, an individual URL uh, is to take care of canonical issues. Uh, by canonical, uh, we mean uh, uh, providing different uh, URLs to Google. Uh, however, the content on all those URLs is is exactly the same. So this is this is a common mistake which is done by I would say smaller or bigger websites. Bigger websites, as good as uh, I would say, uh, BookRenter.com, which is like the second uh, second largest uh, textbook uh, rental uh, or college or uh, textbook rental book in USA. So, while 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 coding, uh, as as we all can see, what are the uh, bad uh, URL uh, URLs when it comes to canonical? Uh, you can see MyWebsite.com is one. MyWebsite.com is one. So ideally, uh, there should be a uniform URL for the website. For example, if someone is typing uh, the website name without the www, so it should ideally be redirecting to the uniform version, which comes with www.mysite.com. So uh, uh, also along with this, we have uh, certain index.html files on the site, uh, which serve the same content uh, to Google. So what Google sees, uh, so out of these four different bad uh, home page URLs. So Google considers all these four to be different URLs serving the same content. So in eyes of Google, these are four different URLs. They are not just the same. So for us, it, it, it looks more like same. But for Google, it's not same. So Google uh, ultimately will end up penalizing all those uh, URLs. So uh, the common practice would be to serve one URL to Google which which uh, which is the home page of the URL and which is uniform across the website. So ideally, uh, a canonical tag uh, should be included in the uh, body of the page, which 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 reads something like link Ariel is equal to canonical and the uniform uh, website name. So. Uh, there are there are certain limitation with search engines and uh, search indexing, and these are certain uh, certain best practices that that uh, every web developer should uh, should should take a print out of this uh, particular uh, uh, screen, and then they should have this in mind while they're coding for individual uh, URLs. For example, uh, the idle. Uh, Page size for for any URL should be less than 150 kilobytes, and it should be less of images. We should not uh, incorporate 
too many images or uh, if if the uh, size of the images is is more for example if you're using dot bmp and then the size is more we should we should uh, we should try minimizing the size of the images we should try using dot jpegs or dot png files and if we are using a uh, lot of css files on on certain page we should we should try uh, clubbing all those css files in one or 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 the next idea would be to like calling the css from a different location which is which is not on on that page but from a call from a different location apart from that because if the size of a web page uh, is more so so the page load time increases so and and then in in the recent updates from google google has said that if there are two websites which has got very good content and which is very SEO friendly but one web page is taking uh, a lot of time to load uh, vis a vis the uh, uh, other website so Google is ultimately going to rank the website which is loading faster in search engine result pages. So, so page size is very important and it should be uh, taken care that it, it should never exceed 150 kilobytes. Apart from this, uh, all the web developers should keep in mind that the number of links on, on any uh, web page should not exceed 100. So it should be an ideal practice. I would say uh, 100 is... is uh, is something uh, we should always keep in mind while while coding for a page. We should not have like more than 100 pages going out uh, from a single uh, URL of the website. Apart from that, as we talked about, the title tag uh, title tag should always be less than 70 characters. Uh, it should not be spammy. It should be a well structured uh, sentence or, or three different uh, targeted keywords separated by comma or pipe separators. Post that meta description, which which is which is a description or a gist of what uh, the entire uh, URL is all about. We should we should uh, formulate a good sentence which talks about the website and put it into the description tag. And and I would also uh, talk about uh, what all parameters we should not be using uh, while we are structuring a specific URL. For example, uh, uh, you can see. Uh, that in that example for uh, no more than two uh, like we, we should not be using uh, special characters like uh, question mark or ampersand and then node equal to five and argument we should not be passing all all these uh, special characters uh, just because a uh, Google crawler only understand uh, uh, simple English or, or, or simple uh, uh, separators for example hyphen or underscores Google crawler finds it very very difficult to parse all these special characters for example if Google crawler comes to the URL which is which is a bad example it would not be able to parse uh, uh, through this URL and go to a different URL so so uh, the ideal good example of a, a well structured URL would be mysite.com slash brands.php uh, Nike so so it, 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 it should be descriptive, should uh, have a brand name or a targeted keyword and, and also uh, while we talk about the directory, uh, directory structure for any specific website, it should not be more than uh, four directory level deep. So after a certain uh, level, Google crawlers find it difficult to go uh, into deep level directories and, and it won't be able to uh, crawl and index all the URLs on a, on a particular website. For example, uh, you can see a bad example which is like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 directory deep. Then we have the exact uh, uh, URL talking about car. So the best practice will be to keep as many uh, less uh, directory levels and so that uh, Google crawler is able to parse through all the directories and able to index and uh, uh, put all the URLs of the website in its database. One other uh, important thing when, when it comes to coding is a 301 redirect. So uh, primarily a 301 redirect is a permanent redirect uh, which passes uh, almost uh, almost 90 to 99 percent of the page authority or, or, or a link juice uh, while we are doing a redirect from one URL to a different URL. Also 301 uh, redirects uh, refers to the HTTP code uh, uh, when it comes to redirection and 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 301 redirect is the best method for implementing redirect on a website as well as uh, on on the same domain or or we are uh, 
shifting uh, uh, from one domain to a different domain. So there are certain uh, best practices that should be followed uh, when it comes to redirecting one single uh, file or a directory to a new file or, or uh, redirecting an uh, entire website uh, to an entirely new domain. So there, there are certain examples that should be followed and kept in mind while, while doing this. As we can see uh, in the screenshot, uh, while, while redirecting a single file uh, to a new file or directory, uh, this is, this is uh, something that should be followed uh, in the .stxs file. So all, all these uh, 3.1 uh, redirects are, are, are then in the .stxs file which is, it is uh, present on the root of the uh, server. So, uh, <clears throat> so this is this is what uh, a perfectly optimized page uh, would look like when when we uh, perfectly code it uh, in terms of title h1 and making certain uh, uh, targeted keywords in the content bold and putting the right file name and alt text. So let let's start from the very beginning. So we, we can see the page title is chocolate donuts and 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 the website uh, it talks about. The brand is Mary's Bakery. So ideally, uh, when Google Crawler comes to this page, it knows that this page is talking about chocolate donuts. And uh, when the meta description, Mary's Bakery chocolate donuts are possibly the most delicious, blah, blah, blah. So this is well under uh, the limit of uh, 155 characters, which, which, is, which, is, uh, which is under the Google Webmaster Guidelines. So when it comes to headline, the headline is, again, neatly done. Uh, it reads chocolate donuts from... Mary's Bakery and then uh, the body uh, text has uh, repetitions of chocolate donuts and all the related keywords. When you go to the left, it, it reads uh, image as chocolate uh, dot donuts dot jpeg, which is, which is again a positive indication to Google that, okay, this image is all about chocolate donuts and it helps in indexing the image as well. And we have alt attribute, uh, which also reads chocolate donuts. So this is, this is how a uh, perfectly optimized uh, page would look like and 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 uh, this is this is how the uh, page should be coded uh, by all the web developers we'll be talking about a uh, certain checkpoints when it comes to uh, robots.txt or or how we should we should uh, uh, well optimize uh, robots meta tag syntax or or sitemaps and we'll be taking all these uh, all these uh, parameters individually so ideally uh, while while we code for any any url there are uh, certain uh, things that that we unintentionally do and stop the spiders from crawling any any web page or 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 the entire website uh, in one go. So there are there are certain uh, issues or, or certain common uh, robot traps uh, that we should keep in mind, and and we should always avoid uh, these things while coding uh, for individual URLs. So first thing would be input forms. So input forms, uh, it's it's kind of a never, uh, it's a kind of a putting the robot or uh, txt uh, into into some sort of trap because uh, if if uh, it's it's an input form, so Google robot. Uh, Will not will not go out and, and index all the other pages when it gets into uh, input forms. The second thing are uh, session IDs. Uh, session IDs are are, are, are kind of uh, it's, it's kind of form of cookies that 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 do not have any expiration uh, date attached to it, and they are frequently used uh, in URL spring, which which can create serious problems for search engines. Uh, in a way, uh, every request produces a unique uh, URL with duplicate content. So we should ideally, uh, ideally uh, avoid uh, using session IDs uh, while we are structuring a URL. And, and, and at times we unintentionally restrict uh, Google bots uh, uh, crawling uh, individual pages uh, through, through cookies. So, so these, these should also be uh, avoided to some extent. And we should not use a lot of frames on individual URLs or, 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 or we should not have a too many. I mean, we should not have login on all the pages, uh, so that it, it's because Google uh, Google cannot uh, go ahead and login. I mean, so login should should not be 
uh, there are all the pages uh, of the website. So uh, next we will be talking about uh, uh, something called robots meta tag syntax. So ideally uh, robot meta tag uh, creates page level instructions for Google uh, search engine bots. So it, it gives a uh, uh, indication to Google bots that okay this is the page uh, that needs to be crawled uh, by Google a bot or this is a page that should not be uh, followed by Google bot should not be indexed or kept in its database so so there are a hell lot of command instructions that uh, that can be given uh, to Google crawler when when we are uh, building a page or a website for example uh, while we are we are creating a website and and it, it's partially up and some of the uh, uh, some of the URLs or some of the sections on 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 the website are not up. So we can uh, we can uh, help uh, we can use these uh, meta robot tags on individual pages so that uh, when a Google crawler uh, comes to these uh, web pages and 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 they should not crawl it or index it. So meta name and and uh, there is syntax that that should be used uh, for robots meta tags. Uh, for example. Uh, uh, in order to exclude individual pages from search engine indices, the no index meta tag should be used, which is given as an example uh, in the screenshot as well. So there are a hell of uh, different commands uh, that can be used to restrict Google bot access to individual pages or, or to the websites as well. Again, uh, a very important uh, thing when it comes to coding and and uh, which which I think uh, personally that every uh, web developer should should have a look while while he's coding for uh, the website or for individual uh, uh, URLs so uh, basically robots.txt or uh, I would say uh, the robots exclusion protocol is a group of web standards uh, that regulate web robot behavior and search engine indexing how we want uh, an individual page uh, to be indexed or crawled by uh, any specific uh, robot for example google bot or amazon bot or yahoo bot how to restrict uh, the entire website or individual urls to be crawled by google or uh, or passing on certain parameters for individual directories or directory that contains passwords or or any private file on 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 the website that you do not want Google crawlers or any specific crawlers to be crawled. So the idea is uh, to place uh, the robot.txt file is primarily placed at on the in the top level directory of the web server in order to be uh, in order to be uh, accessed uh, by the uh, by all the Google bots. So there are some ex there are some examples that that uh, we can uh, see over here how a uh, robots txt syntax uh, would look like for example if, if we want to block all the web crawlers uh, from all content this is primarily done uh, when the website is not up and and we are still working on the website and we want the Google crawlers not to crawl any uh, web page uh, on the website so uh, we pass on these parameters uh, user agent uh, colon star star is primarily uh, for all all the Google uh, MSN, Yahoo, and other crawlers, and uh, this allow colon uh, slash is for like disallowing all the Google crawlers to crawl any content on the website. Next example would primarily be for uh, Google Bot because it uh, specifically reads a user agent Google Bot. So this is an indication to Google Bot that uh, that uh, no hyphen Google. Uh, should not be crawled by Google crawler. So, Google crawler, when it comes to this individual uh, directory, it blocks and and it does not index this individual uh, folder uh, in its database. Again, uh, the third example uh, that we see over here is is a direct indication to Google bot that it should not uh, crawl a specific uh, web page that reads blocked page directional. So, there are there are set of uh, various uh, best practices when it comes to uh, writing a robots.txt file and it is very very important uh, for any and every website and uh, it's 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 a 
primary thing uh, when it comes to all the uh, web developers that should they, they should understand and 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 they should use the correct index uh, for for uh, for uh, robots.txt syntax so uh, one of the very important uh, things when it comes to uh, coding and and in, when, when it comes to uh, crawling of all the uh, urls on a website is a uh, uh, sitemap syntax primarily sitemaps are of two types one is one being html sitemap which which allows uh, which is which is for both uh, uh, users and and for google crawlers and and it, it allows uh, basically a HTML sitemap is is, uh, uh, is inclusion of all the uh, URLs that are there on the website, and uh, they are category categorically uh, put into a web page that has link to all the internal pages of the website. And this is important uh, as as it is bulleted outline text version of the site navigation, and the anchor text displayed in the outline is linked to all the pages uh, of the website. So, so Google crawler when it comes to this uh, uh, HTML sitemap, it 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 can crawl all the uh, different URLs which has been put categorically uh, in one go. And apart from HTML sitemap, the other sitemap which is only uh, important from uh, search uh, bot uh, is, is XML sitemap. The sitemap. Uh, there are different uh, online tools available uh, to create this sitemap and 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 uh, submit it to various uh, search engines so that they can crawl the website in a more effective manner. Uh, using this sitemap, uh, search engines become aware of every page on the website, including any URLs that are uh, otherwise left behind uh, while navigating or, or while going deep uh, down to the directory level. And then there are times when Google crawler uh, does not crawl. Uh, or does not go beyond third level or fourth level or fifth level directory. So if all these URLs are present in the XML sitemap format, it is it becomes easy for a uh, Google crawler to crawl all these URLs in one go. And and there is a specific uh, syntax uh, that is uh, attached to XML sitemap. Uh, if if everyone can see uh, the attached uh, syntax, which says uh, location location. Would uh, ideally contain uh, the name of the uh, individual URL. In this case, it's mysite.com. And the next uh, parameter, we have the uh, last uh, modification date. In this case, it's 25 uh, May 1987. So ideally, uh, this uh, every page on the website should have a last uh, modified date uh, attached to it. And how frequently uh, it, it's being changed. So in this case, uh, the change frequency is monthly, and uh, the priority uh, priority again uh, depends from a URL to URL. So uh, ideally, the uh, priority of the home page of any site should be one, and and, and it decreases uh, when when it uh, goes below in the directory level structure. So this is this is ideally uh, the uh, sitemap syntax for XML format, and uh, when it comes to URL structuring or or naming the XML file uh, on the website. So the default location or, or, or search engine looks for the sitemap as uh, as the example that we can see in the screenshot over here would be like mysite.com slash sitemap xml or, or sitemap.xml.gz. So these are these are some of the uh, naming convention that are recognized by search engines that look for XML sitemap or, or on the website. So uh, so to sum it up uh, so all all the web developers uh, that those who are listening to this uh, uh, listening to me right now uh, so uh, web developers and SEO has has always been colliding uh, in in terms of when it comes to implementing uh, whatever uh, a search engine optimization guy says to web developers but there are certain set of uh, best practices that that everyone should come uh, come or agree uh, agree to uh, while coding. Uh, web page or, or a website so that ultimately the goal is to make uh, every single URL on, on the website search engine friendly and, and to generate traffic for individual web page and uh, target keywords on the website.
so uh, so uh, this is this is all about uh, the best practices that we uh, we uh, as developers should keep in mind uh, while coding a web page and uh, and how to make every uh, individual uh, URL on the website SEO friendly. So uh, guys, I'm ready to take up uh, any questions that you guys would have. Yeah, uh, Keshav, uh, W3C validation is is, uh, is is important for uh, SEO because because Google uh, also considers or uh, uh, considers uh, everything to be a place when it comes to uh, the tags, the implementation uh, of different H1 or hyperlink and all all the strong uh, or bold text uh, to be put in. Ganesh, uh, uh, I mean, we as as SEO uh, people, Ganesh, uh, you have asked how to control the age of the site. Something uh, okay, age of the site is something we cannot uh, we cannot control. It 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 uh, absolutely uh, depends on the registrar when you get a particular domain name uh, registered. Uh, General, uh, you you had a question on canonical tags. Canonical tag is basically a tag uh, that is a kind of uh, indication to Google Bot uh, if there are two different URLs on the website. For example, mysite.com slash index.html is one URL. Second URL being mysite.com. They both are serving the same content. So uh, we want to provide one uniform URL to Google. So uh, in this case, we use the rel is equal to canonical tag in one of the uh, URLs. For example, www.mysite.com. So uh, this is how uh, we implement the canonical tag. Uh, Keshav, uh, you asked, should you prefer underscores to dashes in final name? Okay, so this this is, has been this has been a very interesting question, and then the webmasters across uh, internet has been uh, talking about it all the time. So I think I think I personally uh, would prefer dashes uh, uh, instead of underscores. We have a question uh, wherein the attendee has asked, is iframe lethal for SEO? Well, uh, iframe uh, would not be lethal if, if it's, it's uh, at all a requirement of the client, but we, we uh, kind of suppress it. We, we do not uh, kind of, uh, uh, kind of like, we don't want to have too many iframes on a single page just because Google crawler cannot read uh, what is there in, in, in the iframe. The next question that we have is if we are uh, doing SEO for any website, how we can uh, show the result of SEO to the client. So uh, in this case, I would say uh, there are uh, various parameters or metrics that can be shown to the uh, client. Uh, one in terms of on-page optimization, wherein you can uh, uh, show to the client that these are the number of pages that has been indexed uh, since the day you started optimizing the website. And, and when we talk about link building, you can show the number of link builds on a monthly basis in, in various uh, online repositories, for example, website directories or article submissions or social bookmarking submissions. So, so you can create an Excel file wherein, wherein uh, it says in week zero, these were the number of uh, URLs that were indexed for the website and in week four, uh, the number of uh, indexed URLs increased to 
say uh, some x number and one tab can have the list of uh, submissions in web directories and the other tab will have the list of submissions in articles so on and so forth So, so we, we have a question on uh, on web analytics. I would say that uh, web analytics is the backbone of SEO. So when when you start uh, optimizing a website, uh, you should you should have access. Uh, you should uh, get access from your client to the web analytics because it gives you uh, the trend, uh, the search traffic trend, what people are searching for uh, on search engine and getting to your website. What is the bounce rate? how to get the bounce rate down and it gives you all sort of information about your uh, target customers the geography from where they're coming on and and the kind of uh, new customers who are who are landing to individual pages on the website on, on a weekly or a monthly basis so i think uh, webmaster or or the master tools or web analytics are, are two important uh, uh, tools to work on when when you're working on any of the client's website Uh, Sanjay, you have asked, what do you think of page rank? Uh, I would say uh, page rank is is important, but not that important because it's it's kind of a metric uh, given by Google, wherein wherein it shows there are there is also an algorithm attached to it. Uh, when when Google values a uh, certain page uh, by 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 the authority and domain trust that uh, the neighborhood it has. Uh, for example, in layman terms, I would say that. Uh, if if uh, someone says that okay uh, uh, Sanjay uh, Sanjay is famous for example some of your friends says Sanjay is uh, famous so that would not give uh, Sanjay so much importance but if if a uh, Shahrukh Khan comes and says that uh, Sanjay is important that gives a lot of uh, importance to Sanjay so this is how page rank works if like ten uh, different websites uh, uh, with a uh, page rank of eight or nine links to your uh, website. Obviously, uh, the page rank of the website will go up, and the domain authority and the trust of the website will go up. Abhishek, uh, uh, you you have asked, uh, does changing already submitted SEO data with the newly modified uh, data uh, affects uh, site visibility? This is this is absolutely fine because because. Uh, Google uh, crawlers are always uh, look out for fresh content. So if you are working on any of the website and then you are changing or making changes to the title or or you are making changes to the URL structuring or adding something to the content or or like boosting up the interlinking uh, within the website, it is absolutely fine. It, uh, Google Google uh, Google uh, says positive to it. Okay, Kesha, you have asked what are the latest ways of to improve backlinks or to website. So, as per the latest updates, uh, uh, I would say again, again, uh, submitting uh, submitting URLs in, in the theme-based uh, web directories, which are which are of high page rank. For example, submissions in page rank three and above websites, creating fresh content and only submitting to. Uh, article directories that have got some authority and domain in Google's eyes, page rank five, page rank six, seven directories, and and uh, above all, social uh, bookmarking submission is, is is one thing which is which is is, is good uh, considered good by Google uh, when it when it comes to uh, uh, link building uh, for a individual website. So uh, Pankaj, you have asked uh, that all web developers are doing the same process, but how to bring on top ranking? So, uh, so I would say uh, this this is something uh, something uh, web developers have have a very limited role, as as I, uh, as I mentioned earlier. I mean, a web developer's role is to make uh, a URL or a website SEO friendly 
uh, when it comes to usage of correct HTML tags or correct uh, title tags. But the main uh, optimization work starts after that. I mean, web developers give a good platform to work uh, on. So we as an SEO would, would, would further enhance uh, what you have done. For example, if we have a nice platform, like everything set from web developers and title, description, uh, the interlinking, URL structuring. So we go ahead and, and uh, submit all, all, all the good uh, URLs to the external resources. So I would say our, so there, is, there is a certain limit uh, to uh, search in optimization when, it, when we talk about web developers. I mean web developers cannot like bring any website to uh, first page of uh, Google or any, uh, any search engine rankings. So okay, uh, Pradeep, uh, you have asked what is the difference between uh, 301 uh, redirection and canonical uh, URLs. So uh, ideally, uh, 301 is, is kind of uh, a permanent redirect. For example, uh, if you, if uh, I'll give you two scenarios wherein uh, you are you are uh, trying to redirect one URL uh, on the same domain to a different URL. So we can use 301 uh, over here. But uh, and the second option would be when you are trying to redirect uh, one URL from one domain to a different URL or a different domain. Even we can use 301 redirect uh, in that case. However, canonical uh, implementation is restricted to one domain only. For example, there are two uh, URLs uh, on the same domain, one with uh, www and one with non www. Uh, w. So canonical tag can only be implemented on a single uh, domain. However, 301 can be implemented on two domains. So uh, we have a question where uh, the attendee has asked how all tags help in increasing page rank. So I would say uh, uh, all the tags that we use uh, on, on, uh, on a particular web page, may it be title, may it be h1, may it be all tag. So, so think of uh, these as very tiny screws. So all these screws uh, should be tightened to get a uh, good page rank. So, so individually they would not have a bigger role to play, but when they when we club all these tags together, they have a bigger role to play. So uh, Pradeep, you have uh, asked sometimes Google blacklist websites, what are points we should keep in mind to avoid uh, blacklisting of website. So uh, there are two, uh, two ways of looking to it. First thing would be uh, the best practices that I talked about. We should always follow uh, the Google Webmaster guidelines while, while, while coding uh, a website, uh, usage of correct uh, correct tags, uh, URL structuring, we should not do uh, anything which, which uh, Google frowns upon, uh, we should not, uh, we should not uh, be practicing black hat techniques uh, which, which again Google frowns on and when it comes to off page like building links uh, on external resources, we should not uh, build links from bad neighborhood uh, from websites that, that are like blacklisted by uh, Google or, or uh, websites that do not have uh, much page rank or higher authority. So, so uh, these are two things that which should be kept in mind uh, to avoid uh, blacklisting of the websites. Uh, we have a question from Pankaj uh, that reads, suppose we uh, got any client website to do SEO and bring on top 10 URL on Google. Then, then what our process uh, we have to do. So again, uh, Pankaj, it, it's a two-way approach. Uh, first uh, thing would be to make the website SEO friendly, keeping in mind uh, all the aspects uh, that I talked about. Uh, first thing would be the correct URL structuring and, and uh, 
and about that the title tag implementation on all the URLs across the website. It should be unique. It should contain uh, targeted keywords uh, on all the URLs. Apart from that, the third important on page uh, aspect would be interlinking uh, within the website. Every uh, single URL on the website should be interlinked uh, to the home page as well as the other uh, internal links uh, on the website. So this helps passing of the link juice or, or the uh, page authority to different uh, URLs on the website. Apart from that, there are certain best practices when it comes to link building uh, that I also talked about. Link building in uh, theme based websites, uh, theme based web directories, uh, article directories, creating uh, fresh content on blogs, talking about your client, your targeted keywords, and uh, building links in social bookmarking uh, websites, getting more of social links to your website, social mention of your website, and, and asking someone to write guest post uh, about your target keywords or about your client. So, so these are, these are uh, some of the best practices uh, you, should, you should deploy to rank on top 10 uh, URLs. Apart from that, uh, it also depends on uh, the kind of market that you are targeting. I mean, if it's too competitive, it's, it, it gets difficult to rank in top 10. But if it's a new website or vis-a-vis -vis an uh, old website, new websites uh, obviously will, uh, will, will take anywhere between 6 to 9 months to, to show any rankings on Google. However, it's a, if it's an old website, uh, the chances of ranking are better. Uh, Nine, you have asked what should uh, uh, take keyword separator, a comma, or, or a pipe separator. So, uh, so again, this is this is a very good uh, discussion uh, topic among uh, web, webmaster across the domain. So, I personally feel that a pipe separator is is better uh, passed by Google crawlers, and then uh, that that's what I use uh, while while doing SEO for all the websites. Uh, okay, Kesha, uh, good to know that you are uh, an SEO blogger and uh, you asked that what are the top five things uh, you could tell uh, your clients as an SEO specialist. So, uh, first thing would be uh, uh, what what even even uh, Google says that just try to emulate uh, uh, just try to emulate users uh, behavior. What what users are looking for. So if if you are uh, able to suffice what your uh, users are looking for, you will you will be able to rank on top uh, of Google as well. So it's kind of emulating user behavior. So if your user is looking for fresh content or, or fresh blog post, just provide fresh blog post to the user. So this is this is how you will you will uh, you will generate more trust and more uh, authority for for your blogs or or, or for any of the uh, clients that you are working for. Okay guys, uh, thanks for uh, attending the webinar and it was a pleasure uh, and then thanks a lot. Well, uh, thank you Lalit. It was wonderful and truly knowledgeable session for us and we look forward for another session on advanced topics in SEO. And Thank you all for, thank you audience for attending this and making it a success with your participation and it was highly interactive. Looking forward to your regular participation for the upcoming webinars from TechGeek. Thank you all. Thanks a lot.